Okay, so we have a new release in the local reasoning model space, and this is the QWQ32B from Quen. Now, they'd previously released a preview version of this, and my guess is that they were still sort of working out the best ways to do the RL and trying out different ideas around this. Obviously, when the DeepSeq R1 came out, they also probably learned a bunch of things from that and incorporated that for their QWQ Max preview. So this basically is their large model or their Max model, which I don't even know if they're going to open source this. I think this could be their sort of model that they're going to serve themselves in production and put it out, etc. Clearly, they learned a bunch of lessons from that and come back to this 32B size model to basically improve the performance here. Now, the cool thing for us is that they've released this so that we can actually run this fully locally. So I'm going to go through a little bit about the model, talk briefly about some benchmarks that I think are kind of interesting, and then also show you a demo of basically how you can try this out and if you want, how you can run it locally on your computer. Okay, so the big model that they're going to compare this to in the benchmarks is the DeepSeq R1. So when we come in and look at the blog post and we see that, okay, this is a 32B model and they're comparing it to a 671B model, it's really important that we remember that 671B is actually a mixture of experts model. And the Quinn blog is actually quite upfront in saying that their model is basically 32 billion parameter. They're comparing against DeepSeq R1, which is 671, but because it's a mixture of experts, it's only got 37 billion parameters active at any moment. Now, one of the interesting things here that I think is actually perhaps one of the big takeaways is that it turns out that maybe this mixture of experts with all these extra parameters that make it much bigger and also not only that much harder to serve both locally and with things like Triton and other things like that means that maybe you can get away with just a straight up dense model that's being trained for this specific task. Now, if we go back to the DeepSeq R1 paper, one of the things that was really interesting in there is that after they had created their really large mixture of experts model, they then did distillations to a bunch of different models, including the Quen 32B model. And it turned out that one turned out to often actually perform better than even things like the Llama 70B model in there. So it makes sense when we come back to the benchmarks for this new QWQ30B, that they are not only comparing it to the DeepSeq one, but they're also comparing it to the different distillations of the DeepSeq R1 for both the Llama 70B and the original Quen 32B uh, one in here. Now, the one that I'm going to focus on is this AIM24, which is a mathematics benchmark. And we can see here that this model gets really close to the full DeepSeq R1 model but it's also doing substantially better than the distilled versions in here. Now, I will point out though, that to be fair, their benchmarks, they have left out the newer OpenAI O3 models. So the O3 Mini, for example, on this benchmark actually gets 87.3%. So it's substantially above both DeepSeq and QWQ, but you could think of the O3 as being sort of OpenAI's second generation of reasoning models, where these are just the first generation from these Chinese companies and also the first generation of open reasoning models here. So if we look at these benchmarks consistently, they're very close or even sometimes surpass the full DeepSeq R1 mixture of experts model. And they're always passing the distilled versions of the model, which is interesting. So how do they actually do this RL? While they give us some details, unfortunately, this is not a full sort of paper yet, like DeepSeq actually put out. I'm hoping that Quen will actually release a full paper for this model and their Max model where they've done the same sort of thing. But we can see that there's a lot of similarities in here compared to DeepSeq. Now, they start out with what they refer to as a cold checkpoint, which actually is a little bit vague. In many ways, we'd think that means just after the pre-training, but the actual DeepSeq R1, their checkpoint started after a small amount of supervised fine tuning. So this cold start checkpoint here could actually mean that it's had a very small amount of SFT done before they go to the RL or not. Yet again, this is where a full proper paper where they actually disclose things would be really good. So the first one is basically 
very similar to what DeepSeek did, where this is outcome-based rewards. And this is basically where they're doing RL specifically with things like math and coding, where there is clearly a right answer or clearly a way to basically check if it's done something useful or not useful. And we can see that with the math being what they call an accuracy verifier, where it's basically checking, did it get the right answer, et cetera. And then for code, they've got a number of different things where they can test probably whether the code compiles, whether the code runs, whether it passes some test cases, et cetera, for going through this. Now, unfortunately, they don't tell us any details about the length of this or how many examples did they use. But after they've finished this sort of outcome-based rewards, they then move to a more sort of traditional LLM RL process of where they've got an actual trained up reward model. And they talk about using that trained up reward model plus some rule-based verifiers as well for teaching the model more sort of general capabilities. So you can imagine the first stage is aiming at sort of math and code. The second stage may be aiming more at sort of factual things, at more things similar to what we would probably have in a normal SFT training and in a sort of an RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, or an RLAIF where it's from AI feedback in here. And it's interesting to see that they say with a small amount of steps without, yet again, without giving us any sort of quantity to actually know what small means, they talk about this is able to then sort of increase the performance of the general capabilities, such as instruction following, alignment, agent performance, which is really kind of interesting. And it doesn't drop any of the sort of qualities that they had in math and in coding. Now, it would not surprise me that they sprinkle some of the first stage in with that second stage just to keep it going as well. But that then gets us to a model, which is kind of state-of-the-art for at least local reasoning that we can run both locally in the cloud or we can run on our own devices. So if you want to try the model out, it's up on Hugging Face where you can download it and try and run it locally. You are going to need a lot of RAM to be able to run the non-quantized version in this, but you can actually just bring it up and run it with multi-GPUs in transformers. All my guess is that you could also run it in VLM, etc. in here. If you want to try it, Hugging Face has also got a Hugging Face space up where you can come in here and try it out in here. And you'll see that, for example, if I ask it a question, I've got basically a sort of chain of thought or a longish sort of chain of thought in there. And then I've got the detailed answer coming out here. Certainly worth trying for coding things, but even for non-coding things, it seems to be those thinking tokens, etc., seem to help it be better at doing things like planning, like trying out some of those things. Now, if you want to try their full-size Quen 2.5 Max, this is one with their, again, with the QWQ thinking tokens in here. You can actually come to chat.quen.ai and try that out here. Now, this does seem to be a substantially larger model, and you can compare the outputs from this to what you're actually getting in the Hung Face spaces, etc. Now, if you want to use it via Olama, you can come in here and use it via Olama. They've already got it set up for this. And you can see that this is basically replacing the preview version that they had before. It's just been updated a few hours ago. The way I've been testing it out locally is actually with LM Studio. And you can see that this actually also has a nice way that we can test it, where we can see the thought tokens out. We can see, in some ways, this seems more detailed than the version that I got on Hugging Face. And here I'm running basically a four-bit quantized version of this. And then sure enough, we can see that I've got the output in a very similar way to what I had on Hugging Face. Again, maybe a little bit more detailed with some of this. Now I'm running this on a Mac Mini. And as you can see in here, I'm not getting fast tokens. So this was three tokens per second. But it is quite nice to be able to have this in a UI and stuff like that and to be able to run it and easily just play it around with the settings as I'm going through this. Another thing that I like about LM Studio and that actually got me to start using this a bit more is something that they added recently called speculative decoding. So this has been available in code via frameworks like VLLM. 
but it's basically where you're using a big model and a small model. I think it probably deserves a whole video by itself. So I'll leave that for now, but that's one of the cool things that you can do with LM Studio as opposed to the Olama versions. Anyway, just to finish up, I think this is an important release to check out if you're interested in doing any of this kind of reasoning model stuff locally. So a lot of people were claiming that they were serving the DeepSeq R1 version locally, when really what they were just serving was a distilled version, which is perfectly acceptable. It's just that it's, that's not really the full DeepSeq R1. In this case, you can actually run the full version. And if you've got enough grunt in your computer, you don't even need to run the quantized version like I did. You could run the full version of this. So I do think for a lot of people who've been trying out the distilled DeepSeq R1s, definitely should take a look at this new QWQ32B model. It really seems to be beating all of the distilled reasoning models that are out there. And with the exception of some proprietary models like O3 Mini, O3, Gemini Flash Thinking, etc., this is probably one of the best reasoning models out there at the moment that not only can you try out, but you can actually run locally as well. All right, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.